Andy, I'm looking at your background and there's one thing that doesn't fit with everything else you have. Talk to me. Baby Yoda. Yes. Love that guy. What, what, <laughs> the, how, how did that, how did that end up there? Well, I just love, he reminds me of my dad. Um, he passed away uh, about three, three months ago. And he just reminds me of him. Just like, doesn't say much. And his little fingers kind of like moving around, man. So we just fell in love with Baby Yoda, man. I love, <laughs> I love Star Wars. Love Star Wars, man. So for me, it's love Baby Yodes. So where's your Baby Yoda, Tristan? You have, you, you, you know have him too? Have Tristan, yeah, you have him? I'll, I'll bring him, I'll bring him in between. I'll, uh, I'll have him do a little appearance. And I got a jumbo one in the back of my car, like jumbo rides in the back seat. Oh, it's hysterical, man. It's funny, man. Yeah. And this, and this somehow is brought to you by Red X. Red That's X. right. <laughs> Awkward conversations oh. <laughs> happen all the time, folks. So, I mean, I, Robert, I think you would agree that in order to leverage a platform like Red X, it's, you got to have good habits. You got to be consistent more or less, Amen. right? You got, you know, and, and the, I, I love it because the theme for today isn't just good habits, but it's about those time wasters that uh, keep us from having good habits. And, uh, and we just all experience that because we're having a good time. <laughs> uh, you know, everyone's joining right now and they're like, what are these guys talking about? Well, the pre-show we had got such good connections and had such a good time. We carried that over uh, to kick the show off today because because uh, we, we're, we're, we're being the bad example. So Andy can teach us how to have good habits now. There you go. I love, the, <laughs> I love it. Hey, but awesome. But, but Barry, Tristan, is it, is it Mark? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mark. Um, let's stay in touch um, as well. I'd like to see what you guys do and, you know, how I can help you guys out as well, you know, and how we can connect. So after this, I'll shoot you my email, I guess, with my social, my cell phone. I don't know what these days, how you connect with people, but. Courier um, pigeon. I love that. <laughs> that's what Barry was doing. The, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the X-Men. Sure. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, I know that those that are on and then those that are watching in the because um, we're live on Facebook as well. Um, I don't think that I know for me, this isn't like a sexy subject, right? Like it's a needed subject, but it's one that we shy away from. Like we're afraid to work on our habits. Many of us, because it's like I was joking with you a second ago, you started talking about eating too much food and it's like, all right, that's uh you know, you're crossing a line now, you know what I mean? Uh, and so um, I think that uh, this is the type of stuff, though, that um, it's important. And how, uh, Tristan, you um, you share a lot from the book, The Daily Stoic. Is that the name of the book? Yeah, dude. The Daily yeah, Stoic yeah. rocks. Yeah. And uh, I've actually never read it, but uh, does it go over a lot of stuff that, like, you think maybe Andy's going to be talking about as well? Uh, probably i think the daily stoic is just something that you either start your day with or you end your day with or anywhere in, in between it's just quotes from roman and greek philosophers mm -hmm. for those people that that don't want to stem into the devotionals that are more religious right these yeah. are just philosophers and little quick quote then at the bottom it explains it kind of just sets the day for you or ends the day in the nice. right tempo that's that's it nice and um this is sponsored by Red X. Robert, do you want to tell everybody, the, those that don't know uh, what Red X is? Do you want to take a second and yeah. share what it is? I, I would love to. I mean, the number one thing that I want to tell you that we're bringing you today is actually Andy. So okay. uh, we, we love working with Andy and Andy's going to talk to us about good habits uh, because Red X, of course, we help you find sellers and buyers in this crazy market with our great leads and our Vortex system, uh, expireds, geo leads, FISBO, FURBO, pre-foreclosure. Um, but they don't do much unless you have the right habits behind it to uh, use the dialer and, and make some calls. And so uh, when I say, hey, what are we going to bring you today? There's a special in the chat. You can check that special out. And But the main thing we're bringing you is Andy, because Andy's a good guy we work with, and he's going to tell us about how we can be better at what we want to be better at. Love it. So Andy, I don't want to get in your way, man. Uh, why don't you, uh, you know, what are you seeing out there? What do you think we should know about habits and time wasters? Um, I, I just think overall, um, when I started my messaging with habits in real estate about, uh, I started in 2007 in real estate, I realized Ooh. agents have crappy habits, man. Yeah. Um, just really bad habits. And it's not their fault. 
So just think before I answer that question, we have to address why do realtors have crappy habits? Well, it's simple. 99% of agents come from working for somebody else as an employee. So as an employee, you have employee habits and employee belief systems about work, right? Now, we talk about identity and all that, but that's you know the deeper dive we take on habits. But habits is the word we'll use today where they're used to doing things. Their habits are, are employees. So now when they have all day to do work, as an entrepreneur now, they have all day to work. They have no one on top of them. They have no black or white line saying you get in at this time, you get out at this time, right? Then all of a sudden now, they have no idea how to react. They set goals up. They watch motivational videos. Gurus tell them, just make the calls. Yeah, man, we get that. But that doesn't work that way. Okay, same way why a guy with abs is going to tell you, you just got to eat right and work out, bro. Uh, yeah, we get that. But there's something called identity, a belief system, habits that you first have to learn. And as an industry, we just haven't served agents. And we found a beautiful niche right? Because no one teaches habits. Everyone talks about scripts and lead generators and uh, marketing campaigns and all that's beautiful and all. But I get a lot of things from my students tell me, Andy, I've been sitting on leads and I haven't even called them. I've been paying thousands of dollars on leads and I don't even call them. And then we partnered up with Red X and I started using Red X. They make calling so freaking easy and they still have a problem with people not using it. All you got to do is click two buttons. And right. you're calling <laughs> thousands of people. They're right. literally making it that easy. But guess what? Agents are still not making calls. So it was a beautiful thing that we've done, um, you know, with God's grace, with our messaging to be able to put something together like this, where we focus on habits, we just teach it specifically. And then we talk about, you know, what's causing these time wasters, what's causing What's causing these habits to break down? What, what's causing these good habits to be created? So, so that's the, like the genesis of where we're at. So it's like a little declaration of real estate, where we, how we got here. There's a 90% failure rate. And I think this year we're going to see even higher failure rates um, happening in this, in this market. Yeah. I tell people the good about real estate is you can set your own boundaries and your limits. The bad about real estate is you can set your own boundaries and limits. You know, like it's, it's, it's hard because yeah. self-mastery is a beast. Um, well, uh, you know, what would, what are some folks in the audience? What are you, what are some things they should be aware of right off the bat uh, to not be that part of that 90 plus percent that's going to fail this year? Yeah. Well, the first thing I tell people is it's about a morning routine or an afternoon routine. So if you're listening to this as a realtor and you're a full-time realtor, you're going to focus on your morning routine. If you're a part-time realtor right now, listening, Andy, I got a job. I work nine to five. I got three kids at home. I can only prospect after five o'clock, maybe. Then we're going to talk about your afternoon routine. So whatever it is, it's you need to have a routine from the moment you wake up. So if you're a full-time agent, you need to have a routine from the moment you wake up in the morning to the time you prospect. In other words, when you click on Red X and start using Red X and making phone calls, okay? If you don't have that laid out like a shopping list, laid out, okay? And by the way, I'm gonna give you guys at the end of the show a link that you can download the morning routines. You can create one for yourself, okay, guys? And it's a step-by-step -step process because what happens is people just wake up, they check Instagram, and boom, Instagram, 30 minutes on Instagram. They wake Yo. up. Yep. They wake up. Oh, let me just go over here in the kitchen real quick. You know what? Let me cook something right now. Boom. 15 minutes wasted. That's a yeah. different thing from yesterday. Then you wake up and you know what? Look at that remote control. Oh, Netflix. That's right. Ozark is today. Let me watch that show from yesterday. Boom. You'll watch 45 <laughs> minutes of Ozark just to catch up. So you're just disastrous. Just like a shopping list. If you go without a shopping list to the store, you just buy random things you don't need right? You just go around buying double stuffed Oreo cookies, which I absolutely love. And I'll buy those things. <laughs> but if I don't stick to a list, you're going to spend more money, you're going to waste time. So I would tell you, the answer to that is you need to have a morning routine and nail that down. Now, part time agents, you need an afternoon routine. The moment you get home, what do you do from the moment you get home to the moment you're supposed to prospect? Oh, Andy, but my house is ruined. And guess what? Then before you get home, you're going to park yourself outside your house in the car and you're going to prospect from your car. That's going to be your routine now, right? So there's so many, it's just, it comes down to what are you doing before you should prospect? Not just, 
hopefully it works out and that's it. No, that makes really good sense. And I mean, for me, I've got four children, two of them are 12 months or less. And, <laughs> yes. um, yeah, and so I found myself uh, coming up with a lot of really good reasons like in my mind, really good reasons not to do the things that I needed to. But at some point you just got to make the decision, right? Like, because when you're talking, what I'm thinking is if something's important to me, I'm going to find a way to make it happen, you know, Correct. like, and, and so, you know, how do you do that? Like, cause you said, if your house is a mess, go, don't sit in the car. Um, is it just having clarity of mind? Like, okay, is this really what I want to do with the rest of my life? And so if so, I need to figure out some new strategies or, you know, what, what would you recommend for those that are listening? And like, that's easy for you to say, Andy, you're in good shape and your office is all organized, but what about my hot mess of a life? And baby Yoda's here with me. And baby right? Yoda is doing this thing, you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, so a couple things right now, um, what's happening in your day-to-day -day routines is because your environment is pulling you the way it is. So, two environments exist. Your phone is digital environment. So that first page on your phone has to change. Okay. Cause you look at your first page of your phone a hundred times a day. So if you have a bunch of distracting apps on page one, then you are already setting yourself up at a disadvantage. So page one of your phone is probably your first problem, right? Where people are like, Oh, because you look at that guy all the time. So you should have your CRM on there. You should probably have um, oh, some, maybe some motivational stuff in there, right. To get you going. Maybe you're eating that. I wouldn't put email on there because a lot of people will check their email and get off a of queue on that with agents. I'll do it as, a, as an entrepreneur myself in my business, but for as a realtor, if it's, it's not that urgent on an email, right? Like I tell people. So changing your phone layout, but then also what do you have around your desk? Do you have an Xbox controller right sitting on your desk? You got to remove that, right? I'm a PlayStation guy. Well, I used to be. Well, PlayStation. Do you have a camera at my house? What's wrong with you? <laughs> How do you know this stuff, dude? So changing environments big because then people say, Andy, man, you're just, I can't do what you do. Well, yes, you can. The problem is you just have an environment in your house right now that's pulling you and you think you're making decisions, but you're not. Over 40% of the decisions you make is on autopilot. Your brain is doing it for you. So if you don't want to make bad decisions, you cannot surround yourself in an environment where you're going to be able to grab ice cream, where you're going to be able to grab that Xbox controller, where you're going to be able to turn on a good, you have to start changing your environment. Because if it's easy to grab and it's exciting, anyone's going to grab it, right? doesn't matter who you are, but you have to change that environment. So if you're listening to it going, Andy, but I can't just do that. Well, yeah, you can't do it because you haven't changed your environment. That's, that's the problem. And once you start changing your environment at home, okay, and you start changing what you're doing in that morning routine step by step, and you start auditing your actions and you go, wait a minute, I can't, I can't wake up. Because here's what, and here's what, and here's what the, a big shift is in a morning routine. And it's very simple. It could be a small little thing like this. Years ago, when I first started building this program, I would wake up in the morning, go to the, um, go to the bathroom. And the third thing was supposed to be grab coffee. I would never make it to coffee. So, you know, Barry, I would always go back to sleep because I can sleep in for another. I love the morning. I, I mean, I hate the morning. I love sleep. I love right. it. And I go right back to sleep and I will sleep until eight, nine, 10 o'clock. This was me as my early entrepreneur years. Cause I was like, I ain't got no boss. I got all day. My business ain't booming. I don't have many clients. Great. And that's what I did. And then over time, the squeeze of the schedule starts to happen. Kids can show up, family shows up and then you're stressed out all day. Right? So then we'll start. So what you got to start doing is you got to start looking at that morning routine going, right, is that serving me? I'm not making it to coffee. How can I change this? So obviously I move coffee to step two because I know once I get caught, I wake up, I go right to back in the day. It was my K cup machine, but now, you know, I do the espresso, the Nespresso, you know, cause things are good, you know, a little upgrade, a little upgrade. So now, <laughs> so now I go right to my Nespresso machine. I, I activate the coffee and then I go to the bathroom and then that forces me to not go to bed because now I know I made coffee. I don't want to waste it. The smell of coffee is in my house now. So now I'm changing my environment and it starts pulling me now to the kitchen as opposed to pulling me to the bedroom. My AC turns off, by the way, on a timer. So now my house is hot at a certain time as opposed to it being cool. So now I'm changing my environment so I don't snuggle in in bed. You see what I'm saying? Like, so that's yeah. why 
if it's freezing cold, you're not going to get up. It's going to happen. So you got to start changing your environment so you no longer have to use willpower. And that's what habit is all about. You have to create an environment where you have better friends, better conversations, better eating. And then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? Life is just easier now. Yeah, because you've changed mm -hmm. your environment. It's not, you see what I'm saying? So, yeah. so that's- no, a that, that makes a lot of sense. Do. It makes a that's lot of sense. Do. Yeah. And so then, and, and that's what we teach students is we change your environment to the point where you just wake up, you pop open Red X or grab your phone and boom, you start making calls and you don't even realize why you're doing it. You're just doing it. Just like you just don't do other things, you know? Yeah, like if I'm up at 10 o'clock at night watching a show, it is really hard for me not to eat something that I like. Like it's, <laughs> it's really, 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 really hard. And, and so I found like, now that I'm looking back, I just can't sit in that room and watch to, like I gotta I gotta be somewhere because if I'm sitting in that chair and I'm watching something I like I'm gonna make popcorn or so, something I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy myself yep. and uh so what you're saying is before I become I get into that zombie like state I need to I need to figure out another routine so that I, I avoid that yeah you can do you can brush your teeth what I do is I put my I put my number my retainers but my Invisalign I got Invisalign right yeah. forever now because i gotta wear it now at night all, all the time so i brush my teeth put invisalign on because i'm the same thing as you um barry had the same problem i'll i yeah. snack at night and that's yeah. what gets yeah. me i'll consume a thousand two thousand calories from like 7 p.m to 10 is like like yeah. i'm like a zombie mode like i start grabbing <laughs> things i'm like what yeah. are you doing andy you're just grabbing food like what's going mm -hmm. on so i'll set up a system to prevent myself against myself you know so same type of thing there yeah. So, Andy, all right. Oh, so this is go ahead. Bro, go ahead. Was, was somebody going to say something? Yeah. Well, I, I was just going to ask because uh, I, I love the ideas of changing our environment and having the schedule. Uh, but one of the things that I, I hope isn't just unique to me, but I, because I hear other people do it too, is I can set all that up. But if the next thing on my to do list is something that I don't want to do, so let's say it's, I'm, you know, yesterday was not a great day of calls. So today I'm not excited to push that button and get going again. Then I, I like start finding what, well, what else could I do right now instead of that? Right. And, and like, and so even though I've set myself up for success to that point of pushing the button, I still have this bad habit that, that interjects itself that says, well, isn't there something else we could do right now that would also be productive and, and I wouldn't have to do that thing I don't want to do? How, do? how do we set ourselves up for success even on the things we don't want to do? So two suggestions there is. Number one, the person who got beat up the day before or whatever, they don't want to make those calls. First, you have to make things simple. So the first thing I do on my coaching call with my students when, they, when I first onboard them, and they're like, Andy, I'm going to make 40 calls today. I'm going to crush it for an hour. I'm like, well, how many calls were you making before you bought my program? They're like, oh, no, I wasn't, I wasn't calling ever. I'm like, well, that's not going to happen, okay? Your goal for the first week in my program is make one call. That's it. If you want to call more, go ahead. So now someone's going to go, well, I can make one call on Red X. That's all I got to do is to click a button. That's it. And then boom. So a couple of things will happen. One is you do that first call, and then guess what happens? You're like, well, since I'm here already, Right, you start using the science of bad things like opening up those chips. Ah, one chip, Wah, and then all the chips are gone. So you got to use that science now to your advantage. Ah, let me just do that one call, and then ah, well, since I'm here, let me just make an ah, let me make another call. Right. So that's one suggestion that I would say to somebody: is start small. Okay, it's one of the four pillars of building a habit: is starting, is making it simple. Um, another one is making it fun. You're right, Robert. I get hung up on, I do live trainings on Wednesday where I prospect live. I use my Red X and I'm getting my butt whooped. I'm telling you last month, I was defeated. I was literally telling my partner, Steve, I go, dude, I really hate calling. This, this really is beating me up. And it, it, dude, it gets to a point where you're like, gosh, darn it, right? So I got to go back to basics myself, on myself, right? And another thing that I do is you have to reward yourself. Don't focus on, because a lot of realtors reward themselves on closing day. And that's the wrong time to reward yourself. You need to fall in love with the process, not the outcome. And the wait, way wait, to fall in love, you need to say fall in love, fall in love with the process of calling and prospecting mm -hmm. and connecting with people and do not fall in love with the outcome. Do not fall in love with checks. 
Do not fall in love with closing people. Do not fall in love with getting people's phone numbers and emails. Do not get in love with that. Right. Fall in love with the process. Fall in love with going to the gym, okay? Not the results of what the gym is. So you have to make it simple and also make it fun. And making it fun is the fact that you can even, you start, you, you prospect it for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour. Once you're done prospecting, no matter how the session went, reward yourself with a meal you enjoy, with, it could be music. Some people um, do dancing. I had one lady, she loves to dance and she would put on a song she loved and she starts to dance. So you start to reward your, you know, and you start training your brain to look at prospecting as a fun activity, as opposed to this negative force of, <gasps> now don't get me wrong, that voice is always going to come out and go, oh my gosh, but what if I get told no? What if they say, you know, they embarrass me? It happens to me guys all the time. And I prospect live in front of everybody. So imagine trying to prospect in front of other people, right? Um, that's, that's nerve wracking. But then those nerves change their meaning those nerves are still coming to you, but now they have a different meaning now because you're like, oh, okay, these nerves are here, but I still did things after the nerves and I'm still doing it. So you got to make it fun for yourself, you know? Yeah, it's interesting because as you're teaching this, I'm like kind of uh, engaging it and looking back and I actually don't like exercising and um, I don't like, so muscle growth hurts. And so I realized looking back, like, yeah. I always kind of, as soon as I was getting the growth, I would be like, Oh, and I would always plateau. And so this right. time around, like I'm in my forties, I gotta, I gotta, you know, <laughs> it's, it's make it or break it for me. So I, uh, <laughs> I've actually, as it, as it hurts, right. Like, so I've actually been saying out loud, this is what I want. Like this, this is, this is the muscles that I want. This is the stomach that I want. This is the, and it's the craziest thing. And I don't know the science behind it. Maybe you do but it actually hurts less when I'm saying that to myself. It's like almost like I'm focused on something else while I'm yelling at myself that this is a good thing. <laughs> there you are. Exactly. It. You know that you're focusing on that, that, that feeling that this yeah. feels good. This yeah. is a good pain, right? Someone hanging up on you, you condition yourself to, that was awesome. Now I'm one closer. <laughs> I am one closer to my next deal. Right. So you right. start associating a failure with, wait a minute, I failed. So that means my percentages now are even better because now after so many calls, you're going to hit. That's just numbers. That's just right. math. So now you're right. That pain to you is like, oh, this hurts, but I'm building something. You're right. It's not pain anymore. This is the, you're, you're building. All right. Well, so, so that's interesting because uh, I'm learning something new myself. For those that are watching that they don't have like a really good community of other agents working hard, crushing it. They're not on a team where they've got a manager, you know, staying on them. What are some things, and I, I don't mean to hijack this. So if you want me to wait on this, it's fine. But what are some things they can be doing to like build their business? Like, you know, prospecting, for example, if they hate prospecting and they never do it for one reason or another, what are some, um, other than changing their environment, what are some things that they can do to like trick themselves into doing it more? Sorry, do the, I'm do the method they like. The method that they like. The method they like. Some okay. people love face to face talking to people. Guess what? Let's go door knocking, right? Okay. Some people love, you know, hey, you want to do a video on someone? Let's do a video and send the video out to somebody, right? You want to, you hate video? Then let's go ahead and let's call on the phone. You only got an hour. Let's make it. So you have to make the process so they can right. see evidence that it works. That would be the thing that you want, right? Like you make it fun. Go. I go door knocking once a month down here in South Florida. If anyone here is listening to this, if you want to go door knocking with us, let me know. Because every month I go door knocking and we go in a pack and we look like we're, you know, like a little, like a little mafia here running around. <laughs> but do things you like. Some people are terrified of face to face. Some people prefer the phone. And that's a good start. But I will say this, though. We're not going to keep going down that route in the long run. Because at the same time, if you want to make $100,000 a year and you need to have thousands of conversations with people, door knocking may not be that method for you that's going to get you that volume. Does that make sense? Yeah. So as a coach, I'm like, yeah, we can start there, but we're not going to end there, right? So that person that has that fear, I'll start them off that way. Okay. But then once they see evidence, meaning that belief system starts to change now, that belief system that says, oh, I can prospect. I am someone that can make calls. Oh, I can. That little voice in our head, 
that says I hate prospecting or I love it, or this is that little voice, that's that identity that it takes control of every action we take as human beings. And once I start changing that little voice in your head with evidence that you are actually doing things as a top producer and prospecting, then I'll start shifting it over to more effective methods, right? And making more calls and make it. That's why with Red X, it was a beautiful partnership because what they have and what I teach is exactly the same. Make things easy, fun, enjoyable, right? Automatic, absolutely. So, so that's what I yeah. would say. That's good. That's good. Enjoy and your it, flavor. Enjoy your flavor well, of prospecting. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, do you think that this topic is a big reason why a lot of agents aren't successful? I mean, because the majority aren't when you look at the yeah. numbers. Yeah, they're not. It's the most vulnerable thing ever is prospecting. That's why I, I, I'm glad that my company, we actually go live prospecting live because a lot of coaches don't do it live. I want to, don't give me role playing. Let's go live and make these calls happen so you can hear it. Um, so hey, that's why. Well, talking about that, Andy, do you ever use the the role playing number that Red X has to do it live ever? I haven't, no, I haven't done that actually. I was I know thinking you guys of, have that. Dude, so I was thinking of running a, a live video just so, to demonstrate it and how, how great it is too. I was going to go, because you, you have three levels, easy, medium, and then Barry Jenkins level, right? So I always want to choose the Barry <laughs> Jenkins level. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, so I want to cool. know when Red X was looking to hire the role play, like how do you hire for that? You know, like, hey, we need someone to be a fake buyer to answer the calls in <laughs> real. Like, <laughs> and, hey, it's our secret sauce. So like, I mean, <laughs> I on, on, on the one thing, on the one hand, you can use Red X and you can see that it's got good data. You can enjoy Vortex. You can work leads. But if you've ever called our customer service, that's our secret sauce. Like our our call center and the people that work there, they take care of every customer so well. And one of and they know so much about the product and real estate that it's those same guys that are answering your questions about the product. They hop in and do role plays uh, because awesome. they 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 know their stuff. It's, it, right. it is amazing. And they're, they're a way fun team too. So you should call them just to chat, just be like, Hey, you know, Andy said that I need to be What's in a better up, state of mind doing? this morning. So I don't even need a role play. I just wanted to call and say hi and, and, and get some motivation from you. That's so yeah, cool, yeah. man. That is awesome. I got to say too. I'm, so, so I'm the productivity coach at my office and I keep telling everyone that I coach, you guys got to jump on Red X. You guys got to jump on Red X. Stop scrubbing your list. Let Red X scrub your list. Do your things. Make your calls. And they, they tell me like, Mark, Red X is so sick. I call that secret number and they're like role-playing with me. It's crazy. And they're like, I'm doing all the trainings. They're actually, their customer service is calling them saying, like, hey, like, you know, here's some, some, some classes we have. Here's some training uh, modules. It's, it's pretty sick. It's, uh, I got to say, um, from a consumer standpoint, I agree with Robert. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> and, that's and, then, and that's key. Role-playing that there, yeah. is, they can start to feel that confidence. Mm -hmm. And the more confidence, obviously, somebody has, the more likely they're going to actually go out there and do it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and then I, I love what Andy's teaching because uh, we've, we've used this example a whole bunch today and I've used it before and Andy uses it and it's going to the gym, right? Like you go pay for a gym membership, but if you don't show up, then you might be like, man, that gym membership sure didn't make me skinnier. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so, uh, so you need to listen to Andy uh, cause you need to get in those good habits of actually going to the gym, right? Picking up the phone and yeah. calling the leads. And, and, uh, and once you do that, then, you start finding out. I think I think it was a lab coats post today. I was scrolling and someone made, made mention that, uh, that as they coach people on Red X, that they say uh, that, that they'll make a comment like, "Well, it wasn't working," and they'll log into their account as the coach and be like, "Oh, you haven't made a call." Exactly. <laughs> that <doesn't> make, <laughs> makes sense. Exactly. And and the thing is this: um, realtors that are listening to this, and if you fear prospecting, understand that's normal. Okay, the fear is normal. Right, what's not normal is that that fear is stopping you. Um, and our habits come from our childhood. They come from our upbringing. They come from the music you listen to. They come from the church you go to or don't go to. It's your environment dictates a lot of who you are. So if you're telling yourself right now, well, I, I'm not like these guys. These guys are just different guys. I wasn't someone. I, I used to be a big procrastinator. I used to hate the morning I would sleep in. 
I used to have anger issues, okay? And I get I didn't yell at people, right? And I thought that was normal. That was a habit I picked up from my household, right? You just yell when you get mad and all. So that's a habit. You know, we can get spiritual about this too, but from a habit perspective, it's what you're used to seeing. So if you want to change, you can change, folks. So you're listening to this going, oh, that's just not, no, this is you. You can change the way you are. It all started, the way you are today was just one little small decision over time, right? So the same way we're going to change you in this is just one small decision at a time. So just make one call. I actually, I challenge everyone that's watching this when we're done, just pick up a phone, pick up your phone, uh, not a phone, pick up your phone and just call someone and let them know you're a realtor and how you can help them out. They're going to say, you don't need to help me out. And you're going to say, perfect. Can we stay in touch? Can we? Great. And then ask them for their name and, um, and their email, whatever. Email, and then boom, you made a friend. That's it. I challenge someone to just do that right now and just start with one call to do so. Yeah, no, it's really good advice. And I, I'm a firm believer now um, that my career is established um, that success, we, you know, we watch these webinars and we see people that um, have a level or a degree of success and we want to aspire to follow in their footsteps. And we're like, man, if only I could be like them. And, um, you know, success is a whole bunch of little insignificant decisions. It's just consistently yeah. making really good choices day in and day out. And um, I try to help my agents to understand that because, um, you know, I, I'm a hot mess. Like I am, I'm not, I don't have my act together. I, I have like, I have to make good decisions every day. Otherwise, you know, uh, it's not going to go well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is social media or magazines, everyone just puts their best foot forward. So no one sees the work it took to get there. Like yeah. I can, you know, no one sees you 10 years ago building your business, right, Barry? Yeah, you can say right. it now, but no one saw you 20 years ago where you were. Right. So, and I think we, as a, as a culture, we're just in that instant gratification, microwave type of world, right? Where everyone just shows the end result. And right. then also as professionals, we're also doing a disservice to people because really established gurus are on guru island. They're already established. Their identities already changed. Their habits are intact. So they just turn around and say, well, you just got to do it. Just make the calls. Just got to make. Yeah, but you got there over time. That belief level changed. You are that person now. Okay. And the same way I talk about the guy with abs. He's just going to tell you, just work out and eat right. He's not going to tell you anything differently. Right. Just like you are, Mark. Everyone's saying, like, saying, hey, just make the call. You're right. You're absolutely right. But we got to break it down into the science as to how you make change. And that's what Habit Guys is all about, right? We teach habits so you can start using that science to build that identity so you can actually start taking the actions but ultimately start getting you those results and then you become that guru. It's the foundation. It's the foundation, man. That's it. It's, it's the book. And the book Atomic Habits, by the way, I strongly recommend you read that book. That book, the Bible and Atomic Habits are the two <laughs> books that I push the most, man. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah, are, yeah. That, that's like everything. No, that's awesome. I'm like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, so uh, the person that's overwhelmed right now. So the people in the audience are like, okay, but I've got like so many reasons why I'm failing right now. Um, so we're, we've been talking about prospecting. Let's just stay on prospecting. You might have already said this, but just for emphasis, what should they do first? Uh, they're not calling anybody. Their business is, is not great. Um, you know, where should they start when it comes to making a change today, not next week, but today? I just say, make a list of 12 people, right? Make a list of 12 people, your friends, family, I'll call ex-girlfriends guys. I call everyone. <laughs> hey, our, our relationship didn't work out, but it can work out in real estate. How you doing? It's been a while, right? Call, just call 12 people or call, like I said, one person and make it easy. So that person that's overwhelmed, just make it simple. Just go ahead and set a reminder on your phone and say, hey, Siri, remind me every day at 9 a.m. to make one call. And boom, you've already set a trigger up. So then you see that reminder that pops up. And it's great. Oh, let me just make one call. And then that's it. You, you kind of like start like the training wheels mm -hmm. of setting up a Got system it. really quick that kind of triggers you to do so. 
Um, also, I recommend someone who's overwhelmed and they're busy in the household now that we're working at home. Another tip is tell everyone in the house that from 9 to 10 or 10 to 11, whatever time you're going to prospect, block it off and tell everyone at home mm -hmm. that you're, you're prospecting. Like that's the time. And I think that's a big problem also with, with COVID and everything. I think now the office has been now at home, which all the worlds merge now. And you yeah. know, kids, kids don't know you're working. Sometimes your wife has no idea you're working. They just walk in the room and then they just take over the, the whole environment. So, but if you tell everyone, hey guys, from nine to 11, I'm growing my business. I'm on the phone, put a little sign outside your door. And then that becomes your time to, you know, to prospect. So like little environment changes that you want to start making is what I would Love recommend. It. Yeah, really, really good advice. Mark, do you, uh, like when you're dealing, cause you said you're the productivity coach, like, is, is this stuff that like you find your agents are like, do they go to the office to prospect or do they call from home? Like, how are they, how are yeah. they doing it? Yeah. It's, it's a mixed match. We, we get, uh, it's kind of, you know, based off of like their, their personality and like one, one thing that I love to do is, is exactly actually what, what Andy was saying was when we, when we get a brand new agent in, I love to sit down with them. And I say, Hey, awesome to meet you Friday class. See you there. Right after that, schedule one on one with me. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a schedule like by each hour awesome. of your yes. entire day. And we're going to also factor out any of your sacred time. So let's say like Barry, you're, let's say you're a new agent over here. I would say, hey, Barry, what is what is Barry's time that can't be touched? We have, we have, do we have, do we have, um, we have, we have church? Do we have um, uh, date night? Do we have kids, kids going to school? That time we'll work around that and then we'll dive into what, what you like. Is it door knocking? Just like you said, Andy, it's all the stuff that Andy said is, is exactly what we're doing. And some new stuff too. I'm gonna, I wrote some stuff down, bro. Actually, a lot of stuff. <laughs> Exclusive. New, 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 new. Yes. Yeah, but it, it depends on. Um, sometimes they can go really to the good. office, sometimes they can go work at home. So, you know, it's up to them. Okay. No, yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. Tristan, I know this is your uh, right up your alley. Like this is the type of stuff that you awesome. um, you talk about in a lot of your uh like your social media plan, you break it down into days and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm just, you know, from my perspective, I'm trying to, instead of listening to Andy teach and be like, yeah, I'm doing that. I'm trying to like figure out, okay, what, what, cause I don't, I don't prospect anymore. So I'm trying to make it my own for my agents and my team and stuff like that. Um, uh, and, and applying it to those that are in a position of management that are maybe listening and are trying to figure out how to help their agents. And so, Mark, that's that's a really good tip, just sitting down and, and going through a schedule. Um, yeah. Do you find that helps, Andy? Big time. Because if there's no clarity and you just hope things are going to work out tomorrow, what do you do tomorrow? I don't know. But if yeah. someone can't answer, hey, what time do you prospect? If they can't answer that question, they're probably not prospecting every day. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Like, I call like, that the tyranny of the urgent. Like, you know, it's just like yeah. whoever's yelling gets my attention. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good so, phrase, dude. I thanks, like that. Man. And I think that's like a book. You can write a book on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I Barry actually just, just released book. his book. Yeah. Yeah. It's not on this. You got to pick it up. You got to pick it up. <laughs> it's not on this. Bring them out. Bring them <laughs> out, man. Send buddy. the link. Send the link, man. I want to get it. Let's go. It's, uh, <laughs> dude, what? That was like, uh, it surprised you, but it didn't surprise me, Barry, of how fast it sold so many copies. So, yeah, I don't know, man. That's weird. Yeah, it's too nice for sales.com is the name of the book. Um, nice for sales. It, it, too nice for sales. Yeah. But it's not uh, not a productivity book. It's just helping nice people sell because um, they tend to not be good at selling. But um, uh, But even the book, like people ask me, how did you have time to write a book? And I don't, <laughs> I didn't have time. Uh, but, um, you know, I had to make it a priority and work it into my my routine, more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's me. That's my ugly face right there. Now they get two of my ugly faces. <laughs> so thank you for that, Andy. Oh, cool. um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so uh, breaking it up. And I also found, and I don't know how this relates to what you're saying, but like, with the book, for me, if I felt like I was doing it to finish it, I put it away. Like if I didn't feel passionate and creative in the moment, and I know this is different with prospecting, you can't do that. But like for me with writing, if I was doing it to get it done, 
I, I, I put it away. And that's why it took two and a half years. Cause I didn't want it to be like a book report. You know what I mean? Like I, I needed it to be um, something. And I think right now with the market being the way it is expireds are hard. And so the um, what are they called Robert with the, the credits? What is it called again for circle prospect? Geo leads. Geo leads. So I think maybe we should talk about that a little bit because, you know, it's one thing to get an alert and say, okay, you have 13 expireds today and be one of like a hundred agents calling. It's another to be calling geo leads and saying, Hey, I've got buyers in your neighborhood. Can we talk? Yada, yada, yada. Right. Like there, there's some strategy. It's not just logging in and getting it done. There's some forethought. Where, where, where can I go that nobody else is going? You know what I mean? So true. And you get to choose the location, right? Right. You get to choose the price point and then you become the most popular person in that neighborhood. And I tell people mm -hmm. to do that and you can use other people's listings. OPP, other people's property finally makes sense now, guys. I'm using OPP. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> I think I just dated myself. You're dating yourself. You're dating yourself. other people's property, guys, you little perverts. It's other people's property, other people's listings, okay? That's yeah, what yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. And you get permission from that agent which 90% yeah. of them will say yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got some buyers. I would love to promote it. You promote it. You can door knock and go, hey, there's a property down the sale for sale. You know, that property down the street for sale. You want to know about it? Okay, great. But boom, you start the script. Same thing on the phone. So same thing with you, um, Barry. I'm on the same page. And you're adding yeah. value as a realtor. Yeah. It's not selling at right. all. You're just there to let them know, FYI. And, a, and as a property owner, isn't it pretty good information that an agent is knocking on your door or calling you, letting you know there's a property for sale? Hmm, that's pretty valuable, actually. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much. And by the way, you're door knocking still? Dang, that's a pretty awesome agent. Who does right. that? Right? There's all this stuff that's happening, and you're winning them over. Like, dang, that's a pretty, you know, bad A um, agent right there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I love the geo leads, too, um, Barry. That's a great, well, great little thing right there we can do. Robert, have you guys seen an uptick in agents using the geo leads versus expireds? Like, you know, I mean, expireds are always going to be a part of agents' workflows, but like with the market being the way it is, I can see how maybe that would be more popular right now. Yeah, a million percent. I mean, the the cool thing about expireds, we've been pulling a ton of data on this, is that they, they still exist. Everyone's like, oh, are expireds dead? Do they not exist? They still exist. It's still you know they're a willing seller, so it's it's a it's a hot lead. But like you said, yeah, geo leads has just been taking off. I mean, since day one, it's been a, a killer product. But just this year in particular, it's like just taken off where people, uh, for all the reasons that you said. Uh, but because if it's a neighborhood that you want to own, you're probably the only one calling them that day, so your competition is low. Your conversations are nicer. And there, and there's so many reasons that you get to talk to them. But number one is just to make a friend, uh, add them to your database, have someone to follow up. We know 97% of them are not ready to sell or right then. And, and that's fine. Cause you, you're going to call them with the attitude, knowing that, that you're just there to, to, uh, serve them and help them out. And yes. And, uh, and I'm going to do a little plug real quick because actually, we saw this need and geo leads and circle prospecting up on the rise. And we added also our geo leads plus product that had been there, but that gives you 7,500 credits a month to call. Uh, so, uh, so, so you're make, you can make a lot of contacts a lot of and numbers. get them there and it adds, and it adds emails. So if emails is part of your uh, arsenal and in, in how you're contacting people, you, you get the email address there with the, with the plus product and all sorts of other data points that are available in our plus products that uh, allow you to know like estimated equity, income in the home, uh, what the building materials they use, what kind of roof they have, do they have a swimming pool? So you can be like the most prepared agent ever when you're making a circle prospecting call. Because on an expired, you know, you get MLS information, you have other information, but on GeoLead, uh, we add this in the plus product where you have all the information on the property and things like that. So uh, so that, that one also has just been taken off because that's what's, that's, what's working right now in this low inventory market. Yeah. Now you just, uh, Andy, you just shared scripts, um, that, so that's a circle prospecting. Geo oh lead. yeah. Okay. Geo lead, yep. AKA circle prospecting, yep. um, high level. What, what are you seeing that's working, um, for agents that are making money circle prospecting, 
going back to habits and avoiding distractions. I know there's going to be some repeat of the advice you've shared, but like, uh, is do they need to be calling for a longer period of time with circle prospecting versus expireds, or is it the same routine regardless? Yeah, Geo Leads is the coldest of the cold call, okay? Because yeah. expireds and for sub by owners, people mm -hmm. already know they're you're talking to investors, you're talking to people who already thought about buying or selling at some point, right? So it's a warmer conversation at some to some degree there because they know, but they also get angrier because you're, you know, because you're like more people are calling them. So they get annoyed. Right. So I do notice a lot more people get more upset. Geo leads is more long game, which is what I teach, right? It's all about the long game. Guys, listen, this is real estate. You want to make as many friends as possible, stay in touch with them every single week forever, and then do that for three, four, five years until you never have to cold call again and you're getting referral business. That's the name of the game. And then you don't need Red X anymore. You don't need habit training anymore. That's the graduation process. Use Red X, get habit training, do that. It makes a ton of friends. Use it for two, three, four, five, however, however it takes, however long it takes you to you start making 100,000, 200,000, $800,000 a year on the referral business. And then boom, you're done. You never prospect again. <laughs> and then you just retire. That's it. So that's the name of the game. And I think once you understand that's the name of the game, as opposed to let me close a deal in six months, I only have a year to do this, Andy, to make the jump of work. I go like, nope, you're not going to do it. You're going to do real estate part time. You're not going to jump into this. You're doing it part time wow. on the side. Oh, you only have an hour. Okay, for sure. You're getting red X because you're going to be able to make a hundred calls at least in an hour. Okay. And have those conversations. So, and then in a year, 18 months, two years from now, then you can quit your job. So that's, that's right. I, I want to mm -hmm. set those realistic expectations. Cause I think a lot of people are like, no, man, you just got to quit. Got to go all in. You got to want it. Shut up. No. Are you kidding? You know how stressful <laughs> it is to uh, worry about a deal that that yeah. check is going to de be dependent on you feeding your kids or paying nope. rent or like, no, then you, no, it's all about making friends whether it's right, part-time right. or not make friends with people. So it might take you three years if you're doing it part-time. It might take you five years. It might take you, my business partner, Steve, he created yeah. a business in two and a half years that he's making over 200K a year in the business, okay? Uh, so that's just, so it, it, results may vary, but the game yeah. doesn't change, right? Right, right, right? Making friends until you Absolutely. don't have to make friends anymore. So, <laughs> so uh, we've got like just a few more minutes. And um, before we, you know, I don't, there's probably scenarios, those listening, that we haven't touched on um, about removing distractions, having good habits for success. So while we have the expert Andy on, um, if somebody has a question, I want you just to put it in the chat. Like, well, hey, you guys are talking about yada, 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 but what about this scenario? What about my specific circumstance? This is your chance to get some free advice, right, while we're on here. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I want to keep going, but I just wanted to bring that up that like, if y'all have questions, go ahead and put it in there. Um, so sure enough, where can we find scripts and guides that were discussed earlier? Well, you know uh, what? It looks like it's only in the host and panelists. Andy, will you drop that into the everyone chat or I can. If you oh, want. sorry about that. Okay. I'm dropping the link now to everyone. So there it's habitguys.com forward slash extras. Get all the, uh, morning routines scripts that we use um geo lead scripts um circle prospecting scripts in english and in spanish okay um also if you guys want to hear me prospect live just shoot me a text guys okay or if you want to um if you want a free coaching call for 20 minutes as well i got a bunch of free stuff for you guys so that's my cell phone number shoot me a text with what you want hey andy i want those scripts or hey andy i want that morning routine i already gave you the website but if in case you forget also, if you want to listen to me make calls live, it's every Wednesday at 5 p.m. in English and at 5.30 in Spanish. You can pop in there and listen to me actually grow my business live as I'm doing it. And how do I manage my CRM after the call? How do I prep for the call? All those little nuances that um, you want to know and hear and see, I do that every week for free. So if you guys want that information, just shoot me a text without a problem. Yeah, I was like, why did he put a rose emoji? But your last name is Roses, right? In Spanish? Yeah. Emoji branding. Someone, yeah, 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 no. I thought it was romantic. I don't know. You're going to think of that rose and go, that guy, Andy, man. Uh, look a gun. Every time, and, uh, that's what roses make me think of. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just downloaded all the scripts, so I'm going to dive into those. Awesome, man. That. I'm excited. Yeah, no. Yeah, and I love your feedback too, Mark, man, on those things. I got those and it's, it's awesome. And we're on the same boat. And I think Barry, I haven't read your book, but I love what is showing. But it's just being nice, being, you know, being just loving, authentic, just yeah. being a, just a good human being. We're not here to close people. We're just here to help them out. And hopefully they think of us if they ever want to buy or sell one day. That's yeah, it. I mean, we're not selling vacuums, right? I mean, everybody wants a home. They want a roof over their head. So like we, we're selling ourselves, right? The, the, the product the, the is, you know, is us and the house, they, yeah. they want a house. So that's why I've been able to stay in the business as long as I have. But, um, and, and, you know, I, my agents didn't believe me that, you know, you could surface opportunity from old leads and, and circle prospecting. And so I, I, uh, I did it on speakerphone for our sales meetings for a year. Uh, really? I would just call leads for an hour for, for my agents to listen. And without fail, every Friday, I would get at least one listing appointment and one buyer appointment every single week. Dude, so awesome. uh, I think having a dialer, I don't think we, I don't think we value and talk about the value of having a dialer working through the process of calling because we get distracted but having something going through and calling for us is so important. Um, so yeah, uh, really can you imagine video. dialing that number and then a little <laughs> voice in your head starts saying, oh man, you shouldn't call that person. Look at that last name. It looks intimidating. Oh my gosh, it's 12 o'clock. They're eating lunch. Oh, it's sick. They got back from working with their kids. Oh, it's nine o'clock. Right. They're sleeping still. Oh, like letting that little yeah. voice run over. No way. The dialer That's stays so all true. Day. Yeah. Right. Right. The dialer keeps going. It's like, doesn't give you yeah. time to think. It's like, just call, <laughs> yeah. just call. Yes. Exactly, Tristan. Awesome. Okay, so Joy, asked, guys, so thank you so yeah. much. I think yeah, that's absolutely. at the top of the hour. Robert, Barry, Andy, Mark, you guys are this was a, a fun one, guys. Yeah, great. This was a, I, I, I mean, I can just keep talking all day. Yeah. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got the, the, like the uh, white X, like the brown X, <laughs> like we got all kinds of X's. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> So good. Uh, <laughs> so good. With that, we will leave you. We're apparently oh. starting our own show. Uh, it'll be, uh, we'll, we'll come up with a name later, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Okay. <laughs>